welcome everyone. So, small crowd here today. <laughs> Should have put a tie on. Um, so I, we started to ask the question as people were coming in, but I'll ask again. How many people here are current TimberScan users? Lots of you. <laughs> nice. Which means you're going to tell everyone that's not a TimberScan user in the room just how great it is, right? <laughs> okay. Um, one other question before we start. How many people want me to spend the next hour and a half going through PowerPoint? <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I hate PowerPoint. Um, I do have a few slides that I'm going to show, but um, for the most part, we're going to be in action the whole time. Okay? So, um, I know a lot of people, of course, are using TimberScan. I don't know how much of TimberScan you're actually using today. Um, but for everyone here, um, what I hope you'll see is that TimberScan is far more than just an AP routing and approval system. Um, we've, we've taken the application well beyond that initial uh, workflow automation system that we designed back in 2004 initially. And what you'll see today are some of the features that we've built over the last year plus into TimberScan. Okay? So with that, uh, I'm going to kick things off. I'm going to start off with a quick little um, video here. Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you turn your volume up? Yeah, turn the volume up a little bit here. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to have to let it go. All right. Look familiar? <laughs> lots of paper, lots of key punching, right? I like those guys, so, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to wear this the rest of the, the <laughs> session here. So. What we're going to show you today is a complete purchase to pay solution. Throughout this entire process, we are never going to touch the paper. 
okay? Um, entering invoices, we're going to talk about uh, things like email monitoring and acquire automation. We're going to touch on capture, the OCR component. Uh, we're going to touch on TimberScan Go, our new mobile routing and approval application. Um, we are going to start by talking about core cloud systems. Um, Steve is out in the field. And in a moment, he's going to start entering some purchase orders, receivers, uh, credit card receipts. He's going to enter a timesheet. And um, basically, one, every, once everything is done, I'm going to go through TimberScan. I know a lot of people here are using TimberScan, but for the benefit of everyone, I'm going to go through pretty much uh, TimberScan from start to finish. Um, and then uh, on the back end, we now have a relationship with uh, Avid Exchange. So from the point of a purchase, a uh, purchase order being created to the point where the check is cut, where you don't necessarily have to put the check in an envelope and mail it, you can use the Avid Pay Create a Check and their portal to be able to submit the payments. No paper is going to be touched the whole way. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Steve. And he is going <coughs> to start entering some time. All right. Um, we've got a couple of things we're going to do today. In the, in the course of the day, one of the things about CCS, and we do have a session uh, Thursday at 7.40, that early? Oh, 10. Whew. Uh, at 10.45, we have, <laughs> I don't know if I would have made that one, but we do have a session on Core Cloud if you want to get a little more information about this. But um, basically what we did with Core Cloud is we wanted to design the system so that uh, for the most part we could actually take that same workflow process that we have with accounts payable where we've automated it kind of from soup to nuts as far as the AP system goes and we've tried to take that and basically put it in the same context as with your operational documents. We've also done some things to extend that functionality. So for the first part of the process what I want to be able to do is if you'll notice this screen, unfortunately it's kicking up on me, uh, if you notice how the screen is set up here that we have some options that are that they can do on the mobile phone and in this case right here I'm going to actually come in here when we go into the field purchase order this screen that you're going to see we have some standard applications that we've come out with that will allow us to be able to do things like enter purchase orders in the field be able to route them for approval okay and you'll see this as we go down the line. So what I'm going to do here, I designed a form. It automatically numbers a PO. I can come in here, and you can notice I can pick the date. I can come over here, and on the vendor, this is what we call entry point validation. So if I start typing in my vendor here, like ACE, drywall, and I come down here, it's going to go look up, and it's going to give me those, that information. Uh, I can come down here and continue to do that same validation here. And as I go through here, like this is a job, It'll cascade the cost codes and things like that for me so that I, you know, I don't look at, I only see the jobs that I'm responsible for. It's only going to show me the extras and cost codes that are related from that standpoint. And then as I go through here, I can do lump sum POs. I could do detailed POs because in this particular application, I'm going to create a transaction that's going to automatically send in the purchase order to the commitment module or I can automatically send it to the purchasing module of Sage, okay? So what I've done is we've mobilized that transaction and we're, we're putting that in. As far as cost coding goes, uh, basically it's the same concept. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here because I wanna really uh, show, uh, show off what we're gonna do on the other side, but you can see how all of this is working. Now, once I get finished with this, I can have this, I can take a photograph, I can uh, upload a quote. So you can design this form. And it's very simple to do. We teach you how to do that so that it gives you the flexibility to be able to create your own mobile app for purchasing. And then we take and underneath the hood, we actually have the routing function and everything else. So once I'm done with this, if you'll notice, I do have a signature on here, but I'm going to actually come over here and route this. So I'll come in and I'll hit my route slip. And this is the manual routing function. I can set this form up to be able to route by the user or route by the job or route by the form. So you have a lot of routing options. We kind of know routing pretty well, so we, we kind of built that in. And in this case right here, I'm going to go ahead and send this over there to old Mike, and he's going to come up 
and he'll have to approve this and get this into the system. So <clears throat> not only can you create your own forms, but you can also create the workflow. Like for instance, we also have in this particular scenario, I didn't fill out all the information, but I'm not gonna go back to it. In this particular scenario, um, I can come in and do a credit card receipt. So at this point, I may come back in here and I'm gonna have a form down here for credit card receipt. So I go to home and when I select the, 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 uh, the, uh, my forms here, then I have some options down here. So I have, you can see receiving tickets, credit card receipts, field purchase orders, job pictures, and so on and so forth. In this case, I'm gonna do a credit card receipt. Now, this process um, is the way we have it set up today is what we call proactive credit card receipt processing. Uh, we use it, and I designed this about five years ago because I wanted to be able to use my charge, take a picture of the receipt and put it in my gallery, and then be able to get rid of the receipt and submit it. So in this case, you did the same thing. We set up the form, we fill out the form here, okay? We can put in the card holder since we may have multiple guys. This, a lot of this can be automatic based on your workflow, but you see the validation? Like on the vendor here, I can dictate. Yes. That's the vendor. <laughs> um, but no, you can come through here. You'd see it would have continued to do that. I'm a little nervous up here. When you do this real time, normally you do this in PowerPoint and it acts like real time. Um, but yeah, what her question was, was is this real time? We use TimberSync. Y'all know what TimberSync is. So we're syncing all the time. So instead of just updating TimberScan, we're also updating the cloud system. So, this, so for payroll and everything else, you have that. When it comes time to taking a picture of the receipt, you just select the file. You have a couple of options. You can either take a picture with your camera or you can go into your documents. And this is how I use it. I go into my documents and basically I take pictures of receipts like, you know, whenever I'm using it. So in this case right here, if, I'm, if I wanna go in and record this receipt, it come and matches that receipt onto the system. And then here, if I'm not real keen about coding, I may have to route this to somebody, I'm 60, so I, I don't know how to code nothing and I'm not gonna listen to any new instructions, right? So I may have to have somebody who's gonna code this for me, so I may have written on that receipt how I wanted it coded or what it was for, and this gets sent into the office and they actually do the date entry for the coding. If I'm under 40 or younger, I can actually do the coding myself. And it can either be general ledger coding, you can have job cost coding, it's gonna have validation on it, so basically you have that function and feature there. And then once you're done with this, um, I can come in here and route this credit card receipt to somebody who has to approve it. Or I can sign off on it maybe, that's how that's gonna be set up. So part of the core cloud function is that all of this that we're talking about is all electronic. We haven't created a piece of paper yet, right? And I just did the credit card receipt, purchase order. Now, I'm gonna back out of here and I've sub submitted that in. I back out of here and we're gonna go to timekeeping. Now, our timekeeping option is really kind of unique in the fact that we give you a couple of different options on how to enter time. Uh, we have in, uh, two standard timekeeping entry forms that come with the system and then you can design your own time entry form. So like, depending on who in the office needs to do time, like your staff may just clock in, clock out and it's a 40 hour week. You may have the guys in the field that have crews, they want to do time for the crew. You may have a truck driver that's driving around and you not only want to capture time, but you might want to capture loads and hauls and you know, dray tickets and things like that so you can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick time entry form here. Now what's unique about our time system is we're real time. So as I'm filling out the time in my system, like if I come in here to create and I come in I say, okay, this is going to be a crew type timesheet and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go create this timesheet. When I designed this, I was working with a drywall company that had 50, 60 guys on a job site in Houston, okay? And they would work two or three extras and a couple of cost codes a day. Well, how many transactions did they have to enter on their timesheet, right? So they said, man, I'd like to enter it in bulk and then be able to come out and make my exceptions. So that's what we did. So we came back here, we built it to where he could come in here now. You would he would have used the crew timesheet method. This is what we call our manual crew. So I'm just going to build that crew on the fly. So I got this guy in there, and maybe that's all that's working my crew. I pick up this job today. 
It's going to cascade my, my extras and cost codes. I didn't have any equipment. I could put equipment on this. This is all pulling from Sage automatically. And then you come over here straight time. Let's say I work today. Okay. And I work four hours on that cost code. And I add that transaction. And I came back and said, well, I did lockers. Worked four hours on that. Same crew. And then let's say I came back, had a couple hours overtime on mail shoots. Okay, so I can come back here, delete that out, hit to, hit add, cancel. Okay, so what's happened is, is that basically what I've done is I have entered all the time for all of my guys. That's how fast. If it was a crew of 50, I could have entered those four time transactions in less than a minute. And then I can come back here and say, you know, Bruce, that old guy bailed out on us early, so I'm going to come in here and cut his hours. Okay, you see? So I can go edit. See, let me work two. If I wanted to put a piece of equipment with, with somebody, and this works on an iPad. The real estate on the iPad is a little bit bigger, but we did make it to work on the phone. You might come down here and say, you know, you might want to add a piece of equipment. So if your truck driver or a crane operator was doing equipment, you may want to do per diem. So we could do per diem. But what Mike is going to show you when he flips over to his screen is that <coughs> right now it's on, he's a payroll processor, it's on his dashboard. So it's immediate. He can monitor the time as I'm out in the field doing my timesheets. He can monitor that time. Now, this timesheet might get routed. You see the assigned to? This might get routed to my, my PM first for approval. Okay? So, that may happen in that transaction, and then Mike still sees it, but he sees that it hasn't been approved yet. So the payroll processor, you got to appreciate, I sat behind the desk. So the crisis management on payroll, how many of you guys have to go through that, right? This settles all that down. You go to daily, it certifies already built in because you do everything by the day. They can still enter their time once a week, but if they do it daily, you have a, a real process that you can get to, and payroll's always looking at it. So Come two-day Friday, if you've got to have payroll out on Monday, right, you just basically go in there and say, hey, Johnny, go prove your time. Or run a missing time report. See who hasn't submitted time. Say, so why didn't John have any time on this thing? So he can actually monitor what I'm doing. But in the field, I'm doing this on the job site. I did a credit card receipt. I did a purchase order. I basically did, I could do a daily form, but I'm going to hand it back over to Mike here because I want him to have more time. I did my time, and it's all done on this device. And that's, what the, that's the value in things that we're coming with now today with TimberScan. So when you see on our byline is look at us now, used to be we were just AP. And when we brought in CCS, Mike's going to show you some of the other cool products that we have going on, um, we really feel like we have the baseline for some great products. And we're, our customers are giving us a lot of feedback, and we're making a lot of changes. And I think our staff for programming went from four to, what, 20 in just CCS. So I'm going to leave it from there. I'm the field guy. I did my day. I'm going to go get me a beer. <laughs> you may. Yes. And union. Those are configurable options. So if you're doing union or certified class, and when it goes into payroll, after I export to, when you'll see that here, when he, when he goes to export to payroll, when you set it up in the job, as certified, it checks the box when you do the import. Yes, it does. We do. What we generally do there, this is what we call our standard out of, out of the box package. Um, we do have a standard form that's check, you know, start time, end time, and you can take your break time on that. That feeds these time sheets, or you can feed them straight to the grid. Uh, we've done some different things, and this is a little bit beyond uh, what's cool about our software, different than our competitors, is that we're single tenant. So like if you don't want to charge per diem if they didn't work four hours, we can build those business rules into the system and customize them for you without having to worry about it affecting somebody else that uses our system. But yes, we can do that. Yes? Where you charge time um, by person, do you have a equipment module where you can charge each unit? Yeah, we do. Yeah, the same time entry functionality you have in, in, in Sage, and Michael kind of touched on this in a minute. 
Just like our AP entry mimics a SAGE AP entry, this mimics your payroll entry. Now most of the payroll apps that are out there, that's what they do. So if you can do it in SAGE, you can do it in the app. So if you want to charge off time like that, you can definitely do that. Yes? That would be custom. Uh, we're looking at GPS now. We can capture GPS time or t a location when a time transactions hit, and we have the capability to geofence in our system. We haven't got to that point yet, uh, but that's something that when we do that, it's typically a custom today, but we're trying to build that into our standard product, and probably first quarter next year, we'll have the, ge the, the geofencing and all of that built into our software. Now, the integration with what you already have Generally speaking, I would say yes, because we're pretty wide open as far as our, uh, if you heard the keynote speech today about open architecture, we've been there for a long time. So we'll, everything we do is open architecture, so we can integrate relatively easy. That's a word. Any other questions? How does the uh, table data get back to Sage? Is it uh, an export and import process as far as the table data? Yeah, today it's an export import. You could build a macro on it. It's not like AP where it automatically goes over. Um, we're very uh, encouraged by the meeting this morning. And, uh, and that being said, uh, we feel like we'll be able to write a API type connection instead of using the macro connection. I'm an old accountant and I like to do the import because it does the reject file and all that and you can catch it all right then and there, but that's just an excuse for not having the feature. Yeah, we, we can go to five levels of approval. So we can handle, you know, that you can approve either the form or the grid that I, you'll see in Mike's case. The grid that you'll see on his side is that we can actually have a grid for the PM to where only time that he has based on his job cost settings, only that time will show up in the grid. So he'll show you that when he gets to that point. Does this come with the current Kemper scan or this is an additional like, add-on? Well, Great question, it is an add-on, payroll is, but to what we've done, and Mike will touch on this too, is now part of TimberScan, you remember how we gave away AIM? Well, there's a logic behind all that. We now give the forms tool, so you get one license of the form tool, so you get that inside of, of TimberScan today in our suite. So uh, that starts out the process, and we're kind of like eating at grandma's table. If you buy a seat at the table, you can eat whatever's on there. So if you use credit card, pay, you know, any of the features that I was doing, you can use with a seat at the table, and it's a subscription. It's a, it's a sub pay, as, pay as you go type thing. All right, I'm gonna give it to Mike so he can show you the back end of this, which is really exciting. Okay, all right, thank you, Steve. All right. Um, so basically what you're seeing here, this would be um, the kind of the master menu, if you will, of core cloud systems. So, you know, it's all working off the side panel. We have a number of different, um, you know, applications or functions. Now, Steve specifically focused on submitting a credit card receipt. He did a purchase order, and he also entered time. So I'm going to touch on those primarily today. Um, just a couple of things. So the dashboard that you see here is um, pretty much user configurable. I can have you know, whichever panels I want on the dashboard. And then me, um, so Steve routed some documents to me, so if I go to my inbox, I can see what's been routed to me. So I've got this credit card receipt. If I want to open it up, I can go ahead and open it up and see what Steve just filled out. I can look at the receipt, I can look at all this info. So very quick, very easy for me to be able to go access the information. <clears throat> if I go to um, the credit card, but before I go there, I do want to back up just one second because what Steve was talking about is that with TimberScan now we also provide you with the forms tool. So what Core Cloud Systems is at its core, pardon the pun, is it's a, it's a forms tool. It's an electronic forms tool. You can set up your own forms to do whatever you want with those forms. If you want to take a form, set it up to be able to have someone fill out and use routing with that, you can do that. Now, what we did specifically is we designed the forms tool with more, I'll call it 
mo <coughs> excuse me, module functionality, if you will, behind the whole concept of credit cards, purchase orders, and uh, time. All right. So those are actually designed as modules that have a lot of functionality built behind them, which I'm going to show you just a little bit of that, and we're going to take it through the process. But the whole idea is, is that all of this is, it may start in the field, could get routed, people can be reviewing, just like with TimberScan. Conceptually, it's built the same way as TimberScan is. It's the whole workflow automation process that we've taken beyond AP, and we've extended it out to other functions like this. Okay? All right, so let's start with, um, so Steve filled out a credit card receipt, all right? So let's say that the approval process has, is done. If I go into the credit card <coughs> solution, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just go out and look at the statement listings, and we'll bring up uh, this guy right here. And <coughs> basically what happens is this. Over on the left-hand side, I've downloaded a statement from the credit card company, okay? On the right-hand side, these are the receipts that have been submitted. Now, it's probably down here toward the bottom. These are the receipts that Steve submitted to me, those bottom three, okay? And I can filter this if I want. I'm not going to take the time to do that, but if I want to just filter and just look at Steve's receipts, for right now, I could do that. If I reconcile from here, what it does is it starts matching this, the receipts to what's on the statement automatically. So it goes through and does an automatic match based on criteria such as the card number and the date and what have you. If for some reason I don't have a receipt and I need it, I can go ahead and I can ding them. All right? And what it will do is it will send an email right to the card holder and then they can open up their form, they can fill out their form, attach the receipt and send it in. Okay. Once we've gone through the process of reconciling, it starts taking the, taking the reconciled receipts and it drops them down into the lower section where if I needed to go through and do any further coding, I could do that. <clears throat> okay. Once this is done and I hit the transfer to TimberScan button here, it sends a fully coded invoice to, to TimberScan. And I'll show you what that looks like. So in here, <clears throat> I'm going to call up this particular invoice. So it does this. It does everything that you see here as soon as I hit transfer to TimberScan. There's no export, import, nothing. It created the invoice and it fully coded the invoice for me as well, and it attached all of the receipts that Steve sent in. Okay? All done. <clears throat> I can just move forward from here. If I need to edit this, I can do that, but it basically took all of this information that was submitted, got reconciled, and, and created the invoice for me. Does it attach the, the initial bid as well? Uh-huh. They're all right behind it. So all here, I can call up and I can see, you know, the documents and everything. Mm -hmm. I can see the pictures. I can, you know, anything that's been attached. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's go back. <clears throat> and so, so we're talking about the credit card program. So the next thing that Steve did was he filled out a purchase order. So in the purchasing module. Basically, we have the ability to, I can call up purchase orders or I can create them, I can uh, create the receiver, but I can also go into what's called an approval grid. And from the approval grid, what Steve sent to me is now sitting here in the approval grid, and I have the ability to look. If I want to edit the document, I can go ahead and do so. Um, or if I want, I can just go ahead and over here and I could say, you know what, this one here is done. I'm just going to say I'm going to go ahead and approve it. So I'm basically just going down the grid and I'm determining which ones I want to approve and which ones I don't. Once I'm finished with this, when you hit export CSV, that's what Steve was talking about with respect to creating the commitment in job cost in Sage. So now, as soon as we've already done this beforehand, 
So we already created a commitment in Sage. What it also does is it sends the purchase order and the receiver, if there's a receiver associated with it, over to TimberScan as supporting documents so that when I call up an invoice, I have all the data already compiled. All right, so I'm going to actually show you that. So let me go over to TimberScan again, and I'm going to go into um, Ace Drywall. That was the one that Steve processed. <clears throat> And here we go. Okay, so there's the invoice for Ace Drywall. I'll make it a little bit bigger so we can see it better here. Here's my invoice for Ace Drywall. Here's the invoice amount. Here's my commitment info with my jobs, cost codes, and what have you. Everything that's been coded on the purchase order and the receiver popped in here. Automatically, okay. Pulls up. Yes. Um, it was mentioned earlier that that will automatically get uploaded into the purchasing module of, of Sage. Yes. So that will. Does it correspond? So it shows what the next PO number is, or how, how does it know what PO number to use? It well, now remember that the PO numbers are being incremented in Core Cloud, not in Sage. All, so basically what we're doing is we're taking that PO function that someone would potentially be doing in Sage, we're doing, in, doing it in Core Cloud. Okay. Because we're giving you the ability to actually create the purchase order and process the receiver against the PO in Core Cloud. We're replacing what would normally happen in Sage. Do you still then have to do the process of switching the uh, commitment over to Jobs it, when, when you saw that export, that's what it does. It just takes it and sends the commitment over to so Jobcast. Is it in purchasing and job cost at the same time? Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. Yep. One thing to answer your question too though, um, the other side is that if you want to use our auto numbering function as a like a requisition number and have it auto number in the PO when we do the we do an import. We use a standard Sage import. And so you just set the flag of whether you want the PO to be numbered off the automatic Sage numbering system or it can consume our numbers. So that's a user setting choice that you have. Yeah, yes. We don't use the purchase order module at, at my company. So would that would we still be able to use this? This is just <coughs> stored as a commitment into job cost and there's no need to have the purchasing. Right. Correct. Okay. Correct. Do you, do you find people who replace the purchasing module with this instead? Yeah, it's amazing yes. how a lot of people bought purchase order just to do POs, and they and since Sage has upgraded the commitment module, you can do line item POs and commitment job cost. So they just still use that purchasing function. And it, who uses purchase order in here? And y'all have that special way you handle it with TimberScan, right? Well, if you're not using the inventory components or any of that, um, you can bypass that and just not even use it and push it straight into commitments. <coughs> and then you can use the standard, what he's fixing to show you more of is capture and all that. It works really a lot better. Now, just an FYI, we have a foundation product that we actually have a tool that um, we've been developing and implementing, which is a replacement for Sage, and it's a more advanced feature of our purchasing module. So if you need that item database, you know what I'm talking about, or if you want to use buyout or any of that, we have all those tools in, in those products that we sell. So if we go with this, and we use this simply for inventory, that's the only reason why we would use purchase order. Yeah, and then we would probably say, look at our stuff, because you get the same functionality that you're getting here you know, that seamless functionality, we just have a, a more robust, no, you didn't hear me say that. We have, a, we have a whole inventory suite that works with our material management system. We have a buyout side, we have a bidding side that we're coming out with, and then we have a whole work order inventory solution that, that does two methods of purchasing. One is material based, the other is conventional vendor purchasing. So. The, well, the other thing this, this eliminates is that whole process where you have to, if you're using, if you're receiving yeah. against the PL, where you then have to push that into right. say JP, you eliminate all that. Everything just gets pushed into TimberScan yeah. like any other normal invoice would. Um, do, you have, do you have approval levels and everything on mm -hmm. those purchases? Yep. got an integration to Procore too we're going to show you in a little yeah. while. Uh, what if you, a, a lot of my vendors will parcel invoice 
Yep. I can answer that. In both of our purchasing me mechanisms, if you think about standard commitments today, you can go do a line item PO, right? And you can manage back orders, what you're talking about. In over order, you still got to go in and either let the commitment go into negative or you just got to go make a change order on the PO. But at the end of the day, that still is in existence, but we can now take straight to commitments line item POs. We don't have to do lump sum POs. That's what, and so because, and that's because Sage upgraded commitments a while back. So you have that ability. So a lot of our folks that have been on purchasing and they only did that because they wanted line item POs, we now can bypass purchasing, get away from that different AP process strategy that we have with sales management, service management and purchasing and handle it just like we do a typical invoice. So, so to answer your question, that's changed. And, but if you're really kind of dependent on some of those purchasing features over beyond, could we call this field purchasing here, which is our simple, purchase order light, but if you do need more detail functionality or maybe you do uh, uh, over, over buy, because we actually auto create the change order on the over receive and are out of our inventory system. So we have a more advanced version of, of inventory control, but you would replace the Sage purchasing system. You, instead of them, it would be ours. Do, and you're saying do a change request through Sage? So you, can you attach it to a change request for the issues in Sage? So you know exactly which part of the contract that you, the cost is associated with. You, mm. you, might, you might initiate the change request in a form. Like we have change, we don't show it because I, our, our standard package, we don't do change order because there's two methods of doing change order in Sage. You can either create a new change order document or you can add a line to the existing purchase order. <clears throat> so there's an option there. So we, that's typically what we call a, a modifiable scenario. But for change orders, generally what you would do is you could actually use a form to spawn the request, get the change order approved, and then we can import it. And the only import function we have today with Sage is that we can go to the existing PO and add a line. Oh. Change requests, and then you go out and you have a cost. So I just want to make sure that I can allocate the cost directly to that change request to my customer so I know exactly where the costs are coming in on my project. So, so instead of it being on the, on the contract, the original contract, if this is extra work, it's the, in the change order, yeah. I want to be able to put this PO directly into that change order. Okay. You're using the word customer that's making me think it's a billing function, not a payable function. So, well, they're all combined. Right. I'm looking at job cost overall. Gotcha. So, I have a change request. My customer wants me to put new window sills on a, on right. a window that I had, wasn't even in the scope. Right. So, that spawns a, a new so, change request. So, I got my change request. In order to do that, I've got, I'm going to have costs associated with it. So, right. I want to put this commitment that, or this PO that I've said, okay, this subcontractor is going to come and do this. I want to have this not just appear in the job. I want it to go specifically to that change request. Can I attach? I I think Sage handles that if you're because you're you're tying like an SOV to a contract billing to a, a change order process on the back end, right? Or commitment. In, in, in yeah. Process, I can. It, there's a little line on there. You can. Yeah. Ask, Select what change order it goes to or change request it goes to. Gotcha. You can attach it. So my question is, can I do that from here and do a separate? The only, the only, I, I probably have to ask, answer that question for you tomorrow if you come out of the booth. The reason I'm saying that is we have limitation today on what we can import and update. We only do what Sage says we can do. 
and there's only certain fields that we can actually touch. And if we can't, I know what you're do, talking about, I'll see if we can actually import and change that flag. If so, I can create a form to do that. So, so I'm just going to ask a favor. Um, we're we're going we're gonna to have to move on. I know there's a <laughs> lot of questions here, okay? There you go. But we're going to have to keep moving, all right? So, because you've got a lot to show still. <laughs> so I'm going to keep rolling, and then we'll keep stop, stopping for questions as we go. But if you can, kind of hang on a little bit to some of those as we get further down so we can get through some more of the, the stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Okay. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show with respect to the purchase orders is you can see that not only did it pull in the um, information and coded the invoice, but it also pulled in the receiver and the purchase order as supporting documents as well. So all done, all in one step. Okay. All right, let's go back. Uh, we've got one more piece to show on Core Cloud. And that was the time entry. So Steve, uh, he submitted some time, entered a timesheet on his phone. And again, similar to with the field purchasing, um, I have the ability to use a, uh, what's called an approval grid. I'm just going to pull up some time for this past week. And we'll just plop this in here. Um, this, yeah, this probably, you can see this okay like this. All right, so basically same kind of concept here. These are my timesheets that have come in, all in a grid format. I can go down through, I can scroll through and look at all of these. I can approve, I can verify. I could switch one of these from approved to uh, basically not approved if I wanted to. I can edit any of the timesheets. So real easy application to work with with respect to being able to you know pull up the time and be able to see what's been entered and, and where we stand? Yes. You're the project manager at this point? Yeah. The I could be. A, I, in this case, I'm probably the payroll person. I guess my, my question would be is where's the pay IDs and how would they know sometimes whether it's straight time or overtime? And let's say I just want to look at someone's time. Let's say just timesheets. I'll just pull up all of them for right now. But I can go out and search. And take the most current. Call it up. There's the time. Okay. So it's, it's not only is it sending the time over to Sage, but it's also creating the timesheet that it sends into TimberScan. And then you can use the file link option here to link those timesheets back to that employee record inside Sage. Okay? Can you, can you send it to the employee to have them sign it? Have them approve it. If you have an yeah. electronic approval from them, then you don't need their mm -hmm. signed timesheet. Yes, you, you can. Can um, You could if you had somewhere on this, this timesheet, you yeah. could see you know, who signed it and who it did what. It electronically signs. Yeah. In your case, on the, your signature piece, we have a signature question. Like a lot of our California people that have, you know, they have to get signature timesheets. They actually create a timesheet, and the and the employees either go to the crew timesheet and they tap to put their code in, which is their authorization of signature, or they can literally, if we use a timesheet, they can literally sign their timesheet. So that gets stored in AIM, so that basically, if you ever go under audit, you can go in there and say, "Give me all the time," and that's paper clipped to the employee file too. He'll get to this, but AIM automatically paper clips to some place in Sage, so you can paper clip that to the employee record. So that basically now, if you ever get an audit, you just go say, here's all his timesheets, there's his signature verification, and it's a done deal. 
All right, so I'm going to spend some time now kind of going through some of the basic functions of TimberScan, especially for the benefit of those people who are not current TimberScan users. Let me just recap so far. So what we've talked about is um, the ability to take a purchase order, uh, credit card receipts, or time, and process them remotely, and then submit that data into both TimberScan and into Sage. Okay, so now let's talk about a AP invoice uh, routing and approval. All right, because that's really where TimberScan was was born. That's that's how it was designed. Right. I don't know how many people use the dashboard that are using TimberScan. I called the application up with the dashboard, but it's pretty nice, pretty handy. Where if I wanted to, I can quickly uh, do a snapshot of you know what vendors um, I need to approve or what jobs. The dashboard is flexible so that I could come in here and I can manipulate and say, you know, which tiles I want to see on the dashboard just like I could when I was in Core Cloud. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go through a workflow process. All right, we're going to start at the point where an invoice arrives at your door, and we're going to take it through the routing and approval process from start to finish. So, and what I'm going to do first is let me hide the dashboard just so we'll get that out of the way for now. Make it easier. All right, so. To get the invoices in originally, what we would have to do is we would have to go through this acquire process. So I know that you know a lot of times invoices may come in in the mail, right? And we take them, we put them onto a scanning device, and we scan them. All right? And that all starts here where we go through the acquire function and we scan invoices. You can drag and drop. So if I had you know, some invoices that came in in an email and I just wanted to drag them in, I can do that. Um, as I'm looking at the invoice here, if I notice that I had two invoices in this one PDF, you can just insert breaks and you can separate that way. Simple, easy, quick. So when you drag and drop, you're dragging from the file or from the email? You can drag right from the email if you want. You can drag an attachment right from the email. Yes. Yes, you can. Um, in fact, you can drag an email into TimberScan too, not just the, not just the file itself. I'll, I'll explain that in a couple seconds. Okay, so, so there's drag and drop, right? There's also scanning, and normally what most companies do is they would scan to a file, right? Because you have a network scanner and you want to scan. But we also have an email monitoring program, okay? So what email monitoring does, it actually does two different things. One is it can take invoices that came in to an email address and it will automatically <coughs> monitor that email address and it will take those invoices from the email and it will drop them into a file, just like as if you would scan them, okay? That's automatic out of the box. You can do that today. There's an advanced option to that. What the advanced option does is it will take emailed invoices it will automatically acquire them, so it will bypass this step. It will assign them to whoever they need to go to in data entry. And if the invoices need to be split, it will automatically split them for you. And if you're using TimberScan Capture, the OCR component, it will auto-read the invoice and it will populate the invoice screen. So I'm going to take my chances here. I'm going to cross my fingers. And we're going to do this in kind of live action here. So let's go back here. And I'm going to go out to my email for a second. So I've got, a, I've got three one-page invoices that I'm going to take. And I'm just going to go send that over to my designated email address that I have that I, I've asked my vendors and subs to send emails to, OK? Um, if it's not, oh, if it came in, oh yeah, you can just delete it or just, yeah, yeah. Is this Outlook only? No, nope. no, nope. hmm. it's not just Outlook. So you can do Lotus Notes? Uh, Gmail, whatever, okay. yeah. Lotus Notes. <laughs> I used to be a notes dealer. I, I didn't heard that word in a while. Steve, how old did you say you were? <laughs> I've been doing this 40 years. <laughs> I was a notes developer. <laughs> All right, so I just yep. sent that over. I'm also going to do 
an invoice that has a random number of pages. And I will send that over as well. OK. So the way this works is that, again, I'm going to recap. So the invoices are coming in by way of email. OK. And instead of me having to go into the acquire screen, pull them out of the file, and go through that whole process of assigning them and then sending them in, the system goes through and it pulls that emailed invoice, takes the attachment, assigns it to where it needs to go in data entry, and if you're using Capture, it codes it for you as well. So it's probably been, it's going to take about a minute to do this, and I'm not sure we've had quite enough time, but Let's try. So I'll Look, if you're say. dancing, let me, let me say something about the email monitoring. Email monitoring is great, but you got to train your vendors. You got to put that out of office reply on there and say, this is for emails only. Thank you for this. This is the only copy you need to send us. Don't fax us or it'll slow down your payment. And if you do that and you start getting your vendors trained to do that and quit putting all the other stuff and give them an alternate email box to send their lien waivers and all that other stuff too, the capture, what he's showing you, will speed that whole process up right there tenfold. And, but you do have a management component that you got to train your vendors to do what you need them to do. Otherwise, you're going to be having to move those things around and stuff. Were you just saying not to send the lien waivers with the invoice? Well, to split them up and to take, well, you could, well generally speaking, if you're going to process a lien waiver with an invoice, um, when it comes into AP, you're not going to treat those in the AP entry function. What Mike's showing you is it's going to automatically drop it into AP, so you're going to have to deal with that. Well, you could have the lien waiver as a second page of the invoice. That's how you want to process it, mm -hmm. okay? And, and that would be acceptable. Exactly. Okay. Now, I also have one more question. As far as viruses go, if you have this, we're just dropping them into the system. We've had people email us already that says it's an invoice, and somebody goes to open it, just because they didn't, it's not anybody we know, but it's a virus. Does this system catch that stuff? Yes, it's designed to do that. Just like the measles, but you got to vaccinate it. Do you have another suggestion besides the out of office thing? Because we set that up one time and we got this automatic thing going on with another vendor of ours. This is out of the box, and ours is out of office. And, that, and it was like, it was ridiculous. It was just messed up. Do you have another suggestion? Because we've tried to get our folks trained too, and we just can't seem to get people trained. So we do get tons of garbage in that inbox as well. So if we can't find a system, and we do get garbage, releases, and all kinds of stuff in here, how hard is it to just email it out of the system and say, okay, you know what, that's not for me, that's for Johnny over here or Susie over there? It's, it's, you, you've got different options. Like in Outlook, Exchange Mailbox, you can set rules. Okay, so if it had invoice number or something like that, you can build that rule. If you can't do it, Sally at receptions is a great person who can monitor that box and just do the traffic copy. Like we, I came out of an industry we had 30,000 invoices a month. So, you know, Sally did a lot of her own stuff because we couldn't get the, all the vendors to do it. But we were, we finally told our vendors, we're not accepting paper invoices. Yeah. It has to be in, it has to be email, so you know. You can, right. yeah. All right, so if you didn't notice before when I went in here before, it was at 57 invoices, it's now at 63. So the system automatically acquired those invoices. And if I go in, I'm going to go ahead and just call up um, those two vendors. So one of them was Oregon. Here's the Oregon invoices. It's the uh, stock building supply. All right, so this was a, um, an invoice that had multiple, uh, actually multiple invoices within um, one email, if you will, okay? So stock building supplies invoice comes in, Capture took it, copied and uh, filled in all of the header information. If I go to the next invoice, same deal. Here's a second invoice, did the same thing, okay? <clears throat> same concept with... If I go back in here again, so professional is Northwest.
All right, so here's the uh, <coughs> professional builder supply invoice. And I think that there were multiple um, invoices here, but again, it does the same thing. So it's taking the information, use capture to um, pre-code the invoice, and then it split these out. So these are separate invoices. Here's the second one and the third and so on and so forth. All right? <coughs> it hasn't at this point matched up with the finger or anything. Hasn't matched, doesn't, hasn't done these, yeah, hasn't done the match yet. Right. Okay. okay? All right. So, so far. We haven't touched any paper yet, right? Except for this little piece of paper I have here, my cheat sheet. Um, and we've processed purchase orders. We've processed time. We have um, processed credit card receipts. We've taken all that information. We've pulled it into TimberScan in one form or fashion. And now we started getting vendor invoices in by way of email. And we never touched the paper there either, OK? Didn't have to print, didn't have to scan, didn't have to do any of that. Came right into the system, and it automatically coded the invoice. So now let's go back here for a second. I'm going to talk about TimberScan capture in a moment, but I also wanted to just talk about um, just a regular invoice, regular old invoice that we don't have a, um, you know, some sort of an uh, OCR template set up, right? For those people who, not, who don't use TimberScan, I want to emphasize the integration with Sage for a moment. So as I'm doing my lookups here, you know, I'm searching the Sage, um, you know, master file for my vendor. Okay. <clears throat> Plug it in. You can start typing and it goes and it finds it, right? <clears throat> when I plug in the invoice number, <laughs> if it's a duplicate invoice, it stops me immediately. Okay, and lets me know. So it's not waiting until I get the invoice processed. Now I'm ready to push it to Sage. It knows already that I have a duplicate invoice. Now what I think is really cool and really powerful about TimberScan is, you know, let's say that I stop at this point and I'm trying to figure out, okay, when did we process invoice 24011 previously? What I can do without leaving the screen, I can go right to the history, and I now have a list, a report basically, of all the invoices for that vendor in front of me. Now, this inv now again, talking about the integration with Sage, this is not just pulling up invoices that are in TimberScan. These are pulling up all the invoices for this vendor. This can be used just like a spreadsheet, so if I want to sort any of the columns or group them, I can do that. If I want to find that duplicate invoice, which is right here, if I click on the detail, then I see how it's been coded. In this case, it's a single line entry, but multi-line, I'd see all the line items. The other thing that TimberScan provides are what I call tool tips. If I hover the mouse on the commitment, the job, the cost code, the category, it brings up a tool tip and it tells me what the status of that is. So right here on the screen, this does this everywhere in TimberScan. So if I hover the mouse on the commitment, I can see the original committed amount any change orders, what's been paid, what's been invoiced in the balance. It does the same thing on the job. It shows me the revised contract amount of the job and the job today billing. On the cost code, I can see what's been invoiced on this cost code and how it compares against the revised estimate. Same thing with the cost category. <clears throat> and again, this happens everywhere in TimberScan where you hover the mouse in those fields. I could also call up the original invoice if I want. Here it is. Somebody put a sticky note on it, I see it. I see all the supporting documents behind it. <coughs> and I have the approval page, which TimberScan starts building as soon as you acquire the invoice. And it's basically a date and time stamped record of every iteration of the invoice from start to finish. So you talk about duplication. We know a lot of vendors <coughs> like to revise their invoice, but never change the invoice number. They just reissue it as a revised invoice. Yep. Well, you have choices when you pop up the invoice. When it said in, you know, duplicate invoice number, do I want to continue and override it, whatever. Okay. So you have this, those choices, okay. yeah. <clears throat> all right, so I'm just going to pop back here. So I saw all that information, never left the invoice entry screen. Um, I'll go ahead and just revise this for sake of argument here. Plug in the dollar amount. and. You know, I've kind of already gone through the process of calling up information from a purchase order, what have you. But again, I'll just do this off of a commitment. So I'll just look at my commitment. I'll take this first commitment. 
And when I pull it up, I can go through and I can start selecting the line items that I want to invoice against. If I want to just do all of them, I'll just say all. I'll say OK here. And then it just goes through and it starts populating the rest of the information for me. Obviously, I've got a bunch of compliance issues here with this vendor. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we'll get all that. We also display the status over on the right-hand <laughs> side, as you can see. If the balance is negative, we highlight it for you in red. Um, what it's showing you is not against the commitment. It's showing you what's already been invoiced and what is in TimberScan. So it takes the combination of both of those, compares that against the invoiced amount. Okay. Again, <clears throat> you know the integration with Sage is seamless here. So I'm just you know again being able to pull up all this information, and I've got all the data right at my fingertips. <clears throat> I can attach supporting documents. I can email right from here, put annotations on the document. I can add notes if I want as well. <clears throat> now, once I accept the invoice, that's where the business rules kick in, and it will start routing the invoice off to whomever it needs to go to, right? Could be based on the job, could be based on uh, you know, a number of different criteria. But the routing takes over at that point, the invoices start getting routed. Now, We've talked about timber scan capture, so I'm just going to um, take one moment and show you for those people who are either not using timber scan or don't use timber scan capture how this works. So with capture, you're acquiring a vendor's invoice, and then you set up what's called a template. So I have a whole bunch of um, templates already in the system that I've set up and I'm just I'll show you one here for HD supply <clears throat> and basically what it is is it's basically just taking the invoice and then using this menu that you see across the top to identify the information that you want to be able to retrieve and it's it's really quick and easy so I can just take the invoice number here so when I start out this blue highlighter might be somewhere here in the middle of the screen. I just drop it onto the invoice number like this, and it will then read that area from that point on. So it's called zonal OCR. All right? Now, I know that I'm touting this because this is the way we do it, but the industry will tell you that zonal OCR is the most accurate OCR uh, reader out there. It's greater than 90%. Why? Because it doesn't have to do anything but look to that box. And once it sees something in that box, it just takes the information from that box. That's all it's doing. Okay. Other than you start getting into AI and stuff like that, right? Um, you know what AI stands for? Artificial intelligence, right? Yeah, so you know, then you're starting, the, the thing has to start trying to find different places on the invoice. There's a lot of setup involved with doing that. It's not an easy process to, to, to go through. Whereas this is real simple. And I just go through and I start highlighting where I want to retrieve information from. I can also put in defaults. OK. But when I'm done, ultimately what it does <clears throat> is anytime I receive an invoice from HD Supply, it will take that invoice, drop it right into invoice entry, and And again, what's really nice about this is with the acquire automation piece, it will acquire the invoice, it will read it, and then it populates the rest of the information. So it's already built all of this for me. The other thing is, is you can always override any of these fields. So if the dollar amount is supposed to be 20, I can do that. Um, you know, but it's really just, and the other nice thing about this too, is that you don't have to separate your invoices beforehand. So let's say that you had a stack of 50 invoices that you put on your scanner. And let's say that you, uh, maybe 25 of those 50 had a template set up. The other 25 don't. You can put all 50 on, this, on the scanner. The system, when it acquires, <coughs> it will parse through the ones that have the template from the ones that don't. Oh, that's fine. You can switch company to company. Okay. Yeah. You can, you can tell it to recognize uh -huh. the company it's coming 
Yeah, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, back in the template setup, one of the options was company number as well. Yeah. yeah. How difficult is it to set up the Takes you about three minutes once you get rolling. Oh, yeah, yeah. They use that as it looks at the account number and then it will start separating. Like, for, you know, here's, a, here's an example. I don't know if everyone here is uh, construction, but for like real estate management, right, you get a lot of utility bills. So you might get dozens of utility bills in the same month. What Capture lets you do is you just use an identifier, uh, identify, for example, the account number on the utility bill, and it goes through and it will start charging to the right account based on the identifier. So, yeah. Yes? So, can you create templates solely based off of the vendor, or can you create it based off of, like, for example, I, I do a lot of projects for development projects, and we have, a, we have hundreds of vendors. Um, so it wouldn't really make sense for me to make a template for a vendor because we have, like, at, or like we'll use the same vendor for maybe five different projects. Can you make yes. templates by project? You can. Okay. Yes. You can have one template with multiple profiles. So, yes, you can do that. All right, I'm going to keep rolling here. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, just oh, okay. All right, I'm going to keep rolling here uh, because we only have about 15 minutes or so. Um, so, right, two, 3.15, is that what time? About 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. All right, so, um, so let's say we've done this. <clears throat> we've now acquired, we've gone through the invoice entry process. In many cases, we didn't really even do a whole lot with entry, right, which is where um, whatever his name was was up there going like a madman trying to key, right? Jim Carrey. It's Jim Carrey, so we've eliminated that. All right, so now we're going to go over to the approval side for a minute. Before I do so, um, you know, Timberscan, along with the dashboards, also provides a whole series of reports. You know, we've got um, things that can show you pretty much where an invoice is at any given time. This invoice status report is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Number of outstanding invoices and the dollar amount, but it does have drill down capability. So as I start drilling in, now I can start to see where they're located. If I want to focus in on this guy, because he has 18 invoices, I can drill in again and I can see when they were assigned, vendor invoice date, all that. Can you export this to Excel? You can. Um, I don't, it's up here somewhere, but there's an option up here somewhere. Yeah, export. Yeah. Um, now, <clears throat> how, how many people um, have the circumstance where you have to compile invoice backup to support like a TNM cost plus billing, those types of things, right? Okay, so in the inquiries, if you do a, uh, like say I'm gonna do a job cost inquiry. Now I'm gonna use all dates because that's what my demo data is gonna force me to do because of the date range. But you could say, you know what, I need to compile my um, invoice backup for the month of April, right, for a particular project. So I come in here and I just say, give me everything for job 03001. It creates this spreadsheet look and feel right here. And it's got a bunch of columns here, but way over on the right hand side, I have all the invoice images, okay, right over here that I can call up. Now, if I wanted to, you know, what I could do is I can start um, excluding or including or what have you, certain uh, records or rows. Ultimately, what I can do when I click on this report menu, I can just go ahead and download those images. That's how quick and easy you can compile back up for a TNM or cost plus bill. Does that get downloaded as one file, or is the, each one thing a separate file? You, well, it's, it's one, you can make it one report. You can make separate invoices. Each one will have a separate invoice. Yeah. Well, what, what I'm asking is, is it going to be one PDF with 20 images, or is it going to be 20 different PDFs with one image each? Yeah, look on the right side at the top. Yeah, yeah, the option. You have the option yeah, to switch. Look at the top on the right. You can either do, you can do, you can do a single or you can do a, you can group. You yeah, know. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, 
you know, obviously multiple ways in which you can kind of manage the approval process throughout um, so that nothing kind of slips through the, through the cracks. But now I'm going to switch hats for a moment. No, I'm not. I'm going to keep this on. Um, I'm going to switch over and become an approver for a minute. So, and I'm going to do this using um, our new mobile approval system called TimberScan Go. So basically what I did is I logged in. I'm on a, on a web browser, but I'm going to switch the format here in a couple minutes. Um, so with this, basically when I logged in, what I get is I get, again, kind of like a dashboard view. So some of the, something you're starting to see a little bit of a common theme with TimberScan. As you log into Core Cloud, as you log into TimberScan Go, and even if you log into TimberScan, you can bring up and, and display a dashboard up front. So it gives you kind of that snapshot of what you want to be able to see. This shows me my primary invoices, the ones that I have access to be able to approve. If I can be an alternate where I could approve for somebody else, I can see theirs and also what's on hold. So if I call up my primary invoices, <coughs> I have my invoices in front of me here. And if I want to just, now again, this is based on security, but you see how I could actually go through and approve an invoice right here off of this screen. That's how quick I could do this. If I wanted to, I just touch the invoice itself and it brings up the invoice image. It pull, pulls up the notes beforehand and then it pulls up the invoice. Now we designed this so that basically it works like as if I were doing this on my desktop. But it's designed so that it will fit to any, any type of mobile device. So it's, it, you know, the, uh, the user um, experience doesn't matter whether I'm doing this on an iPhone, an iPad, an Android device, or what have you. So very quickly, what I can do here, I can see summary information of the vendor or, you know, how it's been coded. Um, I can see some basic vendor info here. Now, if I go in and I look at um, my distributions, it shows me how it's been coded so far. And then if I go ahead and call this up, if I need to make any changes or what have you, I can go ahead and do so. The other thing that you can also do here, I talked about the tooltips. They're all available to me out here on my mobile device. So if I want to look at you know, the commitment info, again, I have the tooltip that I can just bring up right from here. So as an approver, yeah. Mike, how much is this? Oh, yeah, sorry, this is free. <laughs> <laughs> right. Free. Um, you need to go to your portal and set up a time and tell them you want to get TimberScan Go. You can imagine that we're, we've got what? Uh, the guys that had, who's in here had HH2? Okay, so they get first choice. So we've we got to move them off. And then we'll start doing, uh, we, we've gotten, what, 100 done at yeah. this point? We've got a couple of thousand to go. So. Is this, do you have to be on TimberScan on, on the cloud? Or is this if it's on, hosted on my server? Host it on your server. Yeah. The, well, the, this is, this is uh, uh, in essence, it's like an app yeah. that will run out. So in other words, you're still using TimberScan the way you always did, right. but you can do your approvals through here. And we encrypt the data so it's secure. We you just pay, use your portals. You don't pay by the click. You don't. Nothing. Um, it's free. It's all free. It's all part of the system. So if we have 50 approvers, all 50 people will be able to go in there and get down mm -hmm. on the mobile? They will, yeah. Do you find that you have problems with folks not updating their cell phones or in, in, in that having issues with approvals and things? We use a proxy server, so okay. we don't have that big of a deal here okay. with that. On the mobile app that we have for CCS, uh, we do have some issues with that. We try to keep somebody looking at that all the time, but okay. yeah. But you know, I can also add line items here. So if I go in and again, it's pulling down the data right from Sage letting me go through, pull up my commitment info, and I can go through and add a line item and just do that if I want. <clears throat> so it's basically, it, it's allowing me to process, you know, whether I'm doing this on, um, you, know, you know, here, in essence on my desktop, you know, through the web browser, or, you know, I'm gonna switch this format in just a second, but other things that you can do here, so I can approve it if I want, I can view the notes, I can reject it. I could route it to someone else. I could put it on hold. I didn't set up myself with security access, but there's an option to put an invoice on hold for payment. 
right? Hold an AP. So that's available to you as well. So if you think about the functionality that you have on the desktop, in essence, for the most part, you're going to get the same thing here. And what's not here now will be here eventually. One of our issues with HHP is the syncing functionality. There's no syncing. Thank you. <laughs> right. How much is this again? <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah, check yep. Yeah, you can put any type of annotation on it. You can do any of these things. Okay, yeah. And those actually go over to HH2. Like, uh, you, you, you can write right on it. Yes. And it will save it actually so when you bring that up on the desktop. Yeah. You You'll see it. Yeah. Yep. Saves we, the annotation. We fix that problem. So I'm going to the details, but how, so Sage updates their accounting system accounts payable. So what's the experience with breaking? Like how long was it down while you guys are trying to get caught up? Or does that not happen? Are you connected enough? Yeah, we're a third party d dealer, no. developer. Okay. We keep up with it pretty, y'all, you guys, most of these guys are our customers. So, I mean, we do pretty, we do pretty good at that, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. 12 years old, 30,000 users. I am. Yeah. CIS. Structured yeah. imaging. Yeah. And we do it conversions. If anybody has that issue, we, could, we have a conversion tool that we can bring uh, this, all of your Im yeah. images into our system. Well, it's a cost. We like 20 years. You might not like it. <laughs> the, the more, the merrier. Yeah. <laughs> We're good with that. <laughs> yeah. Just call us. We'll, we'll, yeah. Yeah. So it's a little difficult for me to do it displaying up, up on here, but I, what I try to do is switch the format so you can see it almost like in an iPad form now, as opposed to through the web browser. I made it a little bit smaller. You can see the only difference here is that it, um, you know, I, it doesn't actually have the name of that particular function across the top, but you can just hover, as you see here. And I could switch it again and make it, uh, you know, display on my phone, and it does the same thing. Okay, it, just, it just shrinks the screen, everything displays, and then I can just use the menu to pull down the information. Okay? So let's say that we... I don't know why it got dark on me all of a sudden. <laughs> I think this light went out right here. Oh. Um, all right, so let's say that we have gone through the approval process and invoices have been approved. <clears throat> so obviously where they end up in Timberscan typically is back in final review, where with final review you can either call these up one by one or Final review could also use the dashboard to be able to go through and, and review the invoices. You send them off to Sage, last step in the process, they get posted there. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that um, we have established a, um, a relationship with Avid Exchange. So basically, and we've been doing, for a long time now, what we've been doing is we've had the ability to take uh, check info from uh, from uh, Pyracles Create a Check. I don't know if anyone here does that or if you're fam familiar with this. But here's basically what happens. So let's say that the invoices got sent to Sage and they got posted in Sage. And now somebody does a check or they, they want to do a check run, right? Well, again, we don't want to be doing this on paper. We haven't touched the paper at all through this whole process, right? So now the checks could get processed and the way that that could work is if you are using, um, you can use Pyracles Create a Check program to access what's called the Avid Portal and then you have options with the Avid Portal to be able to distribute using like a pay card or um, like an EFT type payment. There are different options that you can choose which eliminates you from having to go through that process of printing out your checks, stuffing them in envelopes and mailing them, which is time and money, okay? Now, with TimberScan, 
we still, and we've, we've been doing this for a long time, is we can take that information from, the create, from create a check where it builds a file and in that file are all of your check <coughs> images and you can just go ahead and auto attach them right from the Pyrrhical file. So, to just to clarify what is happening behind the scenes is that I'm going to go in here. I'm going to show you this more and more the manual process. But basically, if I had just generated um, 50 checks into the Pyrrhical file, okay, and maybe I used the Avid Pay network to go through and actually uh, pay my checks. I haven't, I haven't actually physically printed any checks, but in the Pyrrhical file, I have a copy of the payment stub or check image, right? So in TimberScan, I can just pull that information from the Pyrrhical file and I can attach those images to the invoices. It just ripples through automatically and will attach each of, each of those check images. Um, you, you're seeing me do it right here. You, you, you would take them, you print them onto your, you print them out, you put them on your scanner, you scan them and you acquire them back into TimberScan just like you would an invoice or any other document. It does it automatically, looks at the information. Looks at the information and attaches it. Mm -hmm. And then the output on the back end, <coughs> excuse me, in Sage will allow you to see this. <coughs> Um, it is invoice inquiry, right? Invoice register. Mm -hmm. One thing, just as a side note, while he's doing this, if you've ever done the ROI on having Avid Pay send your payments out EFT to your vendors, not only do they like that a lot, you can sometimes accelerate terms and get a three percent five if you want to do that because we can automate the process. But at about sixty cents a check. You know how much it costs you to print a check? It's like a buck fifty. Mm -hmm. By the time you, the time and all the effort to put it together. So it's a third the cost. And the EFT payment, a lot of times the vendors love it because they're not the checks in the mail. They know Thursday's payday and they'll have their check Friday. So that's something to explore. If you really want to see some bang for the buck, that's where you get it right there. Okay. Um, I just got the, uh, the two-minute warning here, so, <clears throat> and plus I'm starting to lose my voice, so. Um, so basically what we, what we, hopefully, we hopefully what we demonstrated for you today was um, that, first of all, TimberScan is far more than just AP, okay? Second of all, um, the whole purchase-to-pay process, which can eliminate paper all along the way. So there's, you know, I didn't touch any paper throughout the entire process. It can be all done, it can be automated, and it can be automated in a fairly simple way, okay? Um, we've talked about some other things. Um, we do have an integration with Procore that we're building. I know that's probably of interest to a lot of people. I'm gonna just quickly describe what it does um, before we finish. So basically what happens is there are three different kind of options. So invoices that originate in the Procore portal we can consume into TimberScan and put them right into the AP invoice entry queue automatically if you want to use TimberScan for the routing and approval process. Invoices that originate in the Procore portal and you want to use Procore to route, you can do that. We can still pull the invoice into TimberScan so that you have a record of it. That becomes your repository. But we don't have to put it through the routing and approval process. We just put it right in the export queue so that you can just update Sage. And then the last piece of the puzzle is if you're processing invoices in TimberScan, you're sending them to Sage, you want those to go back to Procore to update the budget information, it will send it back. Okay? Is that yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. And then, so this is really the last slide here. This is really just kind of what, what TimberScan used to be was this, and now it's that. <laughs>